Hello, uh, welcome to Solution Equilibria. This will be part nine. Um, I think the last one in the series. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, KSP with the common ion effect and, and sort of analyze what's going to happen to your KSP if you add an ion to it, uh, which is um, in common with what's dissolving. We know that KSP means that uh, this is essentially uh, non soluble. Uh, meaning that um, very little to none is going to dissolve. And so if we multiply the products by each other, we get this number, which as you can see is very low. It's less than the water ionization constant. So, um, so what is going to happen um, with, the, with the common ion effect? Well, what's going to happen is that it's going to cause even less of these to be able to dissolve, right? Um, it's going to basically ensure that none of this comes apart because um, putting uh, some of that common ion in there is, um, is going to drive the reaction back the other way. Um, and so these particular equations like this, um, if you have a KSP where you're adding a common ion, and here's the common ion right here, um, chlorine, or um, here we have uh, cerium fluoride and then cerium uh, chloride, right? So Cerium um, and fluorine um, are a solid. It's kind of a white uh, solid that uh, essentially doesn't dissolve at all. Now, cerium chloride does completely dissolve uh, and, uh, and leaves uh, this as a spectator ion in the solution. So, but it does add cerium into the solution. So what we have to do is we have to write out our net equation here of what's going to be happening, and, uh, and we have to do an ice table. So here's our ice table, our initial amount. We weren't given an initial amount of cerium fluoride, um, but we did get an initial addition of, of cerium ions because it, uh, it was a common ion and it dissolved uh, out of this. So we actually have an initial 0.2 of the cerium. Uh, fluoride, uh, we don't have anything initially. And so what's going to happen here? Well, the cerium fluoride, you know, it's just going to be subtracted from, if anything gets subtracted from it. And this one is going to be added, right? It's going to be a plus x because this is a factor of 1. And this is going to be a plus 3x because it's a factor of 3. Um, so in our equilibrium expression, uh, we're going to be subtracting from our initial concentration uh, by a power of x. This equals x. Um, and so what we're solving for is molar solubility. What we want to know is what is the solubility of uh, a mole per mole of this stuff um, if I have this common ion effect going. And, um, and so we've done this before in, in past videos, so I sort of skipped over that. But what we're essentially st solving for is what's the value of x because that would be the molar solubility of this because this is an x. So we have 0, 0.0 plus x and 3x. This is what we get from the ice table. Now the KSP expression tells us that um, we're going to have the concentration of cerium uh, times the concentration of fluorine to the third power. So then all we actually have to do is insert our numbers that we found from the ice table and from the KSP that we already know. So we have the KSP is uh, 8 times 10 to the negative 16th. And our cerium is going to be uh, 0.2 plus x, and our so that's going to be times our 3x, and that is going to be cubed, right? So we just inserted our ice table values into our KSP expression, right? So um, so now. Um, a couple of things that you can do is um, when you look at this, you can see this plus x is going to make the math a little bit more complicated. And uh, you can do it if you want, but you should realize that this x, this x is so little. I mean, it's, it's literally nothing. And so we could actually just not worry about it. Um, and so if we do that, let's just go ahead and, uh, and get it out of there. Let's just erase it. So we're going to have 0.2 times um, 3x to the third power. So if we do that out, um, we end up with x equals 5 times 10 to the negative 6 molarity, or and that's the molar molar solubility. So, um, so that's the value of, 
of this right here that, that, that could possibly dissolve. Um, and uh, let's do something else. Let's look at a similar idea. Uh, what would it be like if I combine it with a 0.2 molar NAF solution? Well, you see what that would do. That would add uh, the, the Na wouldn't do anything because it's a neutral ion, but this one, in this case, the fluorine, would do something because it's common ion with the, the cerium fluoride. So, but the, the only thing that would do differently is it would add the 0.2 to the fluoride instead of to the cerium, right? So our equilibrium expression down here would just be x, and this would be uh, 0.2 plus 3x. So same kind of thing. Um, we've got 8 times 10 to the negative 16th, and uh, that is going to equal x uh, times, uh, we can get, let's see, let's just go ahead and write it all out. So we have um, not 0 0.02, we have 0 0.2 plus 3x, uh, that's going to be cubed, and, uh, and what can we do? Well, um, we know that uh, this x right here is so tiny that even three times its amount isn't going to really do anything. So we're going to take a shortcut, and we're just going to happily get rid of that. And now this is a much more um, happy little equation to solve, right? So a uh, piece of cake to solve, if you solve that, x equals 1 times 10 to the negative 13th molar solubility. All right, so, um, and you can notice in, in both of these situations um, where the common ion involved, the molar, molar solubility of uh, cerium fluoride is going to be less than in uh, pure water, because in pure water, um, the molar solubility uh, we could solve for, you'd simply just go the KSP um, in, in this case is going to be, um, let's see, it's going to be 27x to the fourth, right? Because it's x times 3x uh, squared or cubed, so it's going to be 27x to the fourth. Uh, so we have um, one point, or not one point, we have 8 times 10 to the 16th um, equals 27x to the 4th. Uh, multiply that all out, and um, you'll find that x equals 7 times 10 to the negative 5th. Uh, this, so this is just in pure water. So... Um, in pure water, um, we are, uh, we are um, and notice right here, uh, the molar solubility when you added the, the cerium ion um, didn't really affect it nearly as much as when you added the, the fluoride ion. Um, but anyways, uh, if you look at both of these, you see that it, it should make sense. It should match up because uh, both of these new molar solubilities are less than if it was in pure water. So we have the common ion effect and we've shown it mathematically that it is actually working. All right, uh, one more quick example uh, doing the reaction quotient idea. So the idea of reaction quotient is that, um, is, you know, when you have a double replacement sort of reaction like this, um, we have two, um, and these are both aqueous, right? We have two aqueous solutions, and we're going to put them together, and they're going to form an aqueous solution of, um, of this should be a 2 in front of there. Sorry about that balanced equation. And, uh, and then this, you know, we would always just call that's a solid. Well, that's our precipitate. Well, actually, you know, we know that um, if, if we have a small enough amount, it might not precipitate because actually a little bit of these things dissolve. Right, so, um, so we might want to double check that, and that's where the idea of the Q, the reaction quotient, comes into play. So if we write the net ionic equation out here, um, the, the sodium is spectator, the chlorine is a spectator, and so we'll get rid of those and carry this down here, and so we have the hi two hydroxides and the one barium go together to make the barium hydroxide with a KSP of 5.0 times 10 to the negative third. So um, how do we do Q? Well, Q, put this right here, Q 
is where you just take your total molar concentrations, just the total amount that you have and multiply them by each other. And so the idea is that if you take the total amount you have and you multiply them by each other, and then you could compare that to your KSP, right? Um, and your KSP would, would, um, would be a, a total of the same kind of thing, only the maximum amount. Well, if this is greater than your KSP, uh, if you have more putting in, if, you, if you've put in more than your KSP allows you to dissolve, well then you're going to have a precipitate. So a precipitate will occur. Right? Because um, the Q just says, I want to know my total amount that I have. So I'm just going to take all my products because I know my total amount because I'm putting in this much of this and that much of that. And I'm going to multiply them by each other um, and that's called a Q. Right? So Q is just to, to get a number for your total amount you have. And then you compare that to your KSP. And if your Q is greater than your KSP, well, you have more than your KSP. So it's going to have a precipitate. And not all of this is going to dissolve. Now, on the other hand, if you have uh, less, if your KSP is greater, it means that you can actually dissolve more than what you've put in. And so you actually have no precipitate. So let's go ahead and analyze this right here. So we have barium. Um, we need to figure out what exactly our new molarities are because we've taken 175 milliliters at this 0.1 barium chloride and uh, 40 milliliters at the 0.5 sodium hydroxide. So the barium, it's going to be 0.1 molar at uh, 175 milliliters is going to equal, this is just your, uh, your normal solution dilution M1V1 equals M2V2 equation. So the solution dilution equation, uh, real simple for solving uh, one of these kind of situations. So what's my new molarity if I take 0.1 molar 175 and I increase it to 215? Why is it 215? Because I added 40 milliliters to 175 milliliters, right? So my new volume is 0.215 liters. And so I find out that my barium molarity is 0 0.0814. <clears throat> Hydroxide, you do the same kind of thing. We got 0.5 molar, and uh, that's a 40 milliliter solution. And I'm gonna increase it to uh, my new volume for both, of course, is uh, 215. And so my new molarity for hydroxide is 0 0.0. Uh, 930. So now I need to plug that into my Q, my Q quotient, and uh, I got 0 0.0814, that's my barium, so that multiplied by 0 0.0930, that's my hydroxide squared. So do that and multiply those together and I come up with uh, 7.0 times 10 to the negative fourth. Um, and so what was my KSP for this? Um, if you look right here, my KSP was 5.0 times 10 to the negative third. So my KSP is actually greater than my Q, which means that I can dissolve more than the total amount that I've put in. So there actually, in this solution, there will be no precipitate. So even though we've learned that, um, oh yeah, this forms a precipitate because these are what we call insoluble, um, there's a little bit more to it. And if you notice that there's a very, very small amount, it's worth it to check this. But of course, um, these sort of equations and problems are always going to be you know, with KSP. If you see KSP thrown in there, you can assume this is what you're supposed to do. If they tell you to predict, predict the precipitate, this is how you do it. And so... The prediction from this is that no precipitate will occur because the KSP is actually greater than the Q. All right, hope that helps to uh, clarify how to do all these uh, KSP and reaction quotient equations.